Hello again, this is the second video on understanding the rock curve and how to construct it. If you haven't watched the first video, then please go and watch it before before this one because things will make much more sense. Now, if you remember, we mentioned that the rock curve usually looks like this and we have the sensitivity as our um, y-axis and 1 minus specificity as our x-axis and values are usually between 0 and 1 because we're dealing with uh, 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 proportions or rates and we mentioned that the worst case is this red line here if that of our model is in that red line then that's the worst case but we ideally we want our model to follow a certain pattern of this blue curve here and perfectly we want to push it as much as we can towards the top left corner if it's if it touches the zero one point then that's a perfect classifier we gave an example and by the way just a reminder we must be familiar with the confusion matrix if not then please look it up on my youtube channel i do have two videos on uh, explaining c a confusion what a confusion matrix is and always remember we're only dealing with binary classifiers here now I gave an example on how to build or how to construct a rock curve we mentioned the idea of having actual and predicted classes and we mentioned the idea of uh, sorting things in descending order according to prediction probability we're, we're dealing with a yes class so we saw them in descending order and then using different cutoff points we can compute the true positive rate and the true negative rate which are the same as as we mentioned before the false positive rate is the same as 1 minus specificity which is on our x-axis and the true positive rate the same as in sensitivity and it's on our y-axis and remember we said we can easily build confusion matrix out of these values and this is the corresponding confusion matrix for that now for our rock curve uh, to sort of quantify the performance of our classifier we want to compute the area under the curve remember this that's point one and one this is um, one and zero and that's zero and one and ideally this curve will be we'll try to push it towards the top left but we want to compute this gray area as you can see here to quantify the performance now for a perfect classifier if this point is there if it touches the um, 0 and 1 point then that's a perfect classifier and the area under the curve is 1 usually known as AUC area under the curve a random classifier has area under the curve of 0.5 which is the red line here anything at 0.5 or less than that that's a horrible random classifier we don't want it while a perfect classifier is area under the curve for a perfect classifier is 1 what that means is that this blue line here for our model goes like that it goes through the 0 and 1 point uh, in practice most of the classification models have an area under the curve between 0.5 and 1 as we said we want our curve to you know go towards the top left as much as we can sorry I keep repeating myself I just want to make sure that the idea is clear so more on the AUC more on the area under the curve an area under the curve of 0.8 for example means that a randomly selected case from the group with the target equals yes has a score larger than that for a randomly chosen case from the group with it with the target equals no in 80% of the time this is how we interpret the area under the curve I'll read it again an area under the curve of 0.8 for example means that a randomly selected case from the group from the group with the target equals yes so with the predicted value equals yes has a score larger than that for a randomly chosen case from the group with a, the target equals no in 80% of the time so 80% of the time will uh, when we randomly choose uh, a case from the group the exp the predicted value of that case will be yes in 80% of the time when a classifier cannot distinguish between the two groups i.e. between the yes and no classes the area will, the area will be 0.5 the rock curve will be coincide with the diagonal line as we mentioned before this line here and 
if there is a perfect separation between the two groups, i.e. no overlap of the distributions, the area under the curve will be 1. So the rock curve will reach the upper left corner as we mentioned before the rock curve will go through the 0 and 1 point so it goes like that. I hope this makes sense this is how to interpret a rock curve or the area under the curve there are techniques to compute that area but I won't be explaining them I'm going to stop here thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time